In Creo Parametric, you can create assemblies. In the previous Assembly Basics video, I created this assembly. Let me close it. In this video, we are going to create this assembly. And just to orient you to it, I'm going to hit the exploded view icon in the ribbon to show you what we are going to make. All right, let's get on with it. I am now going to create a brand new assembly. You can use the new icon. The keyboard shortcut is Control N. And in the new dialog box, I will change the radio button from part to assembly. And for the name of the assembly, usually at your companies, it's going to be a bunch of different numbers. So I'm just going to type in some numbers to pretend that it is my part number. And then for the name of this, this is where you get to use real English words so that people can search on them in your data management system. And here we have the option to use the default template. I will click the OK button in order to use my standard template. Now my assembly is started. You can see I have my default datum planes and default coordinate system in the model tree. Let's bring in our first component using the assemble icon. And I'm going to start off with the engine block part. I will double click on it and right now it is just placed in the graphics area in a position I can start defining constraints but usually for the first component you use the default constraint that will align the origin of the part with the origin of the coordinate system and you'll notice when it is fully constrained the component changes to this orangish color I'm happy with that I can hit the green check mark in the dashboard or middle mouse button which is the same thing and then for the second component before I bring that one in I'm gonna make things a little easier to see right from the get-go I'm gonna select the engine block I picked it out of the model tree but you can also select it out of the graphics area and then from the model display overflow menu I can choose to change the component display style to transparent it'll help with some stuff that I'm going to do later all right now let's bring in the second component I will hit the assemble button we're gonna put a crankshaft in here so I will double click on the part this particular component has a family table it has a number of different variations to use and for selecting which one I want to use you can either choose it by name or if you go to the by column tab you can select it based on some different parameters but I'm going to use the first one in here let's click the open button and again it just gets placed in the assembly approximately wherever Creo wants to place it and I can start using the 3d dragger to position it a little bit with this component I want it to have a rotational degree of freedom so that corresponds to a pin connection I'm not going to use constraints for this one I am using connections to get to my connections I can do that from the connection type drop down list let's choose pin and so now it wants me to pick how I want to align the axes and I'm going to select the cylindrical surface from the part and right now I'm just tapping the right mouse button until the correct surface highlights and then let me position on my mouse again and once again tap the right mouse button until the correct cylindrical surface is pre-selected and then I left click in order to select it in order to eliminate translation I'm going to pick two flat planar surfaces or two datum planes to align and in this particular situation I don't have geometry like a flat planar surface to use so I'm going to use some datum planes let me turn on my datum plane display and now I realize oh you know what I've got some assembly default datums that are visible let me go to my layers which I have in the quick access toolbar because I use it all the time and let's see let's go to the default datums for the assembly I'm going to hide those in order to reduce my clutter and then let me use the drop down list to go to the engine block and I'm going to make these datums visible and then go to the crankshaft part and make its datums visible so just doing it from the layers dialog box let me repaint the screen and in order to get it where I want I'm gonna pick this plane from the engine block 
and this plane. Now put it nicely in the middle. All right, that is good. Let me turn off my plane display. It says the connection definition is complete. There's another option in here for rotation axis. If you want to define the zeros of each component, but since this is a component that can rotate through 360 degrees, I don't need to do that. Let's just hit the check mark in order to complete the placement of that particular part. And again, to make things easy to see, I don't need the crankshaft for the moment, so I'm going to left click on it and then use the hide command from the mini toolbar to reduce my clutter. The next component that I'm going to put in here, there are going to be a couple of pistons that are going to go up and down inside of the engine block. Let me click on the assemble icon and I will look for the piston part and double click on it. And once again, I can use the 3D dragger to move it a little bit closer to where I want it to be. Sometimes it just helps me figure out how I'm going to place it and roughly like so is good. With this component, again, it can translate up and down inside of the engine block. That corresponds to a slider connection, which is one translational degree of freedom, but I'm actually going to use a cylinder connection. A cylinder connection allows one translational and one rotational degree of freedom. The reason I can use a cylinder connection is that when I put my connecting rod assembly in, it's going to eliminate the rotational degree of freedom. So this is just a little bit easier. Let's select the cylindrical surface from the piston part and then the cylindrical surface from the engine block, and it turns to the orangish color. It says my connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark in order to get it into the assembly. And I want one more of those in there, and instead of hitting the assemble icon, I can use the repeat command in order to place another instance in here. I will right click on the component, and then here we see the repeat command, and that will open up a dialog box that will list all the different constraints or the constraint references. And I will select the only one that's in here and then hit the add button. And then I'll pick the other cylindrical surface that I want to use. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And so now I've got two of my pistons located in the assembly. And once again, I am going to make things easy to see for, let's see, my next step, I am going to hide the engine block and bring back the crankshaft. Now I'm going to put in my two connecting rod assemblies. And once again, I need my datum planes visible. And let me just hide some of the ones that I know I won't need for this operation and just make the screen as easy to read as possible. All right, so now let me use the assemble icon. I'm gonna grab the assembly that I created in the previous video. Let's use the 3D dragger to move it a little closer into place where I want it. Ah, oops, wrong axis, there we go. That's ah, close enough. I just wanna get it somewhat near. All right, so for my first step in placing this component, I wanna have one rotational degree of freedom between the connecting rod assembly and the crankshaft, so that is a pin connection. Let me go to the dropdown and choose pin, and so for the axes to align, let me select this cylindrical surface from the lobe of the crankshaft, and then pick this cylindrical surface. And then from, uh, to eliminate the translation, I will pick this datum plane from the assembly and then this datum plane from the component in order to get it where I want. This is a special situation where I'm actually going to use two connections. So now in order to get the piston connected to the connecting rod, let's click on the new set icon and Again, it's one rotational degree of freedom, but I can use a cylinder connection because when I put in the cylinder connection, it's going to eliminate the translation uh, because this is now going up and down inside of the engine block. 
So anyhow, let's select a cylindrical surface from the piston and then select the cylindrical surface from the connecting rod and it adjusts the location. The connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark. And to get the second one in there, just like with the piston, I can use the repeat command. Let me right click on the subassembly and then choose repeat. And here it lists the three different constraints. I'm just going to left click on all three to select them. Be aware, this is one of the situations in Creo Parametric where you actually do not have to hold down the control key. Now let's hit the add button. And so for the first highlighted surface, let me pick this. And then for the highlighted plane, let me pick this plane. And then for the other highlighted surface, I can get to it from here. Pick that one. Now it adjusts its location. That looks great. Let's click the OK button. And I don't need my datum planes anymore. Let's turn off their display. Let me bring back the visibility of the engine block. And now we need about two or three more components in here. For the next one, let's put in the side cover. Let me go to the assemble icon. And then let's find our motor side cover. And again, I will move it approximately into place. You don't have to do that, but I find it convenient a lot of times. And so for my first constraint, I will select this flat surface. And then I'll move my mouse over the model. I actually want the back surface, so I'm going to tap the right mouse button. And when the correct surface highlights, I will left click. And right now it is giving me a distance constraint. And if I want to change that, you can do that from here. I'm trying to select it inside of the graphics area. If you double click on the 3D note, you can also select your different constraints from the little, I don't know what you call this thing. Whatever that thing is, you can change the constraint from there. All right, let's see for the next constraint, I can select the bottom surface here and the bottom surface over there. And then for the last constraint, I could pick the side surfaces. I don't know, for some reason, I like using holes. Let me select this hole and then that hole over there. And it changes to the orange color. The component is fully constrained. Let's hit the check mark. All right, now I can throw on the head to the engine block. Let's go to the assemble icon. And I know it's got head in the name. Let me start typing in head. There we go. It's called cylinder head. I will double click on it. And again, I always like to move it a little bit closer to where I want it to be. Let's rotate it a little bit and then position it. And this is actually a situation where it might actually help me if I display the component in its own separate window. And that way I can say, all right, let's pick this flat surface and... Which surface do I want from the component? There we go, this surface. And for some reason it gave me a normal constraint. Wow, that's weird. Let me change that to coincident. And then, let me just move it a little bit. All right, for the next constraint, let me choose to pick, let's see, let's pick this cylindrical surface. And I wanna get the cylindrical surface from the engine block, that is good. And let's see, let's, uh, by the way, there's this option here called allow assumptions. And if that option is checked, this component will be fully constrained. In this situation, I don't like allow assumptions. I just want to make sure that this isn't going to end up accidentally rotating into the wrong location. I usually only use allow assumptions for components like fasteners or components with 360 degrees of symmetry. Uh, but for something like this, uh, yeah, there's a particular way that I want this in here. I want to make sure that I'm not going to have the wrong rotational angle for that one. So let's put in another constraint and then pick this cylindrical surface. And let me try picking this surface. That's good. And you'll notice it gave me an oriented constraint. A lot of times when you have one coincident constraint in the model and then you pick something else, it'll use the oriented for the second set of references that use cylindrical surfaces or axes. It just helps reduce regeneration failures. 
So anyhow, let's hit the check mark for that and let's do one last component in the assembly and that will be the flywheel. Let's hit the assemble button and let's go to flywheel and in this particular situation, let's see, let's pick a cylindrical surface here and pick a cylindrical surface there. And I don't need to see it in the separate window anymore. It's easy enough for me to pick. Hey, let's now pick this flat planar surface. And let's see, I want to have that touching this particular surface. Once again, I got the distance constraint. Let's double click on the note in order to change that to coincident. And this one over here, yeah, you know, it's, it, I really don't care about controlling the rotation angle. Hey, let's turn it, allow assumptions back on for that one. All right, hit the check mark, and there we have our assembly put together. The last thing I'll show you in this video, here we have the drag components command, and I can click on a component that's capable of motion. And you can see as I move my mouse around, it is rotating the crankshaft, which is connected to the pistons with a connecting rod, and the flywheel is on the end of the crankshaft, so we can see the motion that we are getting in our engine. So there you see it, some additional basics of creating assemblies. In this one, we use some connections in addition to constraints. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.